Hey, this is Pastor James McCarroll with First Baptist Church in the beautiful city of Murfreesboro, Tennessee. Want to welcome you to our online experience. We're at the Fountains in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. Y'all ready to get started with worship? Let's get it started. Let's go. Good morning, First Baptist. We're going to sing a familiar song with you this morning from a hymn. If you happen to have one of our hymnals at home, it will be on page 262. It's leaning on the everlasting arms, and we're going to do all three verses. If you don't have a hymnal, Google it real fast, but you'll be able to follow us. Let's worship God with this hymn. How about that? What a fellowship. What a joy Clay Mayfield, I'm one of your deacons here at the church. Uh, joining me today is John Stewart. He's also one of my fellow deacons uh, here at the church. Uh, also a key member with the Boys Mentorship Program. We may get to that later. Uh, Don, thank you for joining me today. Uh, uh, you know, with your time, I want to I ask you, during this time of quarantine, this time of isolation, what type of things have you been able to use and, and focus your faith, uh, you know, focus in, dial in on your faith, uh, you know, just words of encouragement or ideas for anybody that's watching out there today. Well, well, you know, during this time, you know, it's just been, you know, to see, you know, a lot of people getting sick with the, um, you know, coronavirus mm -hmm. or, uh, you know, a lot of death, uh, you know, uh, the, um, you know, the racial injustice that's going on now. So many things are going on all of a sudden. And, you know, all I can just think about like, man, here's something else coming. So, so my faith is, um, you know, it's to another level now because, you know, I realize that there's nobody 
but Jesus, mm -hmm. um, you know, that can fix this situation. Yes, sir. Um, you know, I have friends that are, um, you know, have, you know, been in a hospital sick and, you know, um, you know, they're making it, but, uh, but also I'm, I'm seeing people from the church and different people passing away and, and it just takes you to another level, uh, you know, with your faith That's because, right. um, you know, it's kind of like you feel helpless because, uh, you know, what can you do? Mm -hmm. uh, and then you, you know, and then I think about it, well, there's nothing I can do. Um, uh, you know, it's not up to me, it's up to God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know, one of the, um, when, you, when you talk about faith and, you know, one item that's, that's there is that everybody that's, that's watching this, you're not here by coincidence. Yes, sir. You know, out of, <clears throat> out of uh, all the time um, that, that, you know, generations and eras, God didn't make, didn't stop making strong people. If he was lining it up, you know, he already knew what was written. Yes. So do you think he would put some of his weakest people in 2020? No. No. We, no. we hear no, for a reason. All. We hear for a purpose, man. 2020 has done a lot. Um, you know, we have, um, yes. there's a lot of statements about 2020. Yes. And, uh, but we're here for a purpose. Yes. You're watching this is because you still got a mission to do. You still got purpose. Yes. God still has something for you to do in your life. 2020, um, as as strong as 2020, as devastating as 2020 has been, you're stronger. Yes. Yeah. Um, and then just speak on that. Yes, sir. But, you know, when you talk about, you know, we are all here for a reason. Mm -hmm. And 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 the one thing, and if you, I mean, you knew in the past, but if you but but now you know for for sure if you didn't know any, anything else 2020 has taught you you better be about your business mm -hmm. and you know serving about the lord business. yep with all that has been going on this this year all the plans we had vacations jobs, after school programs, graduations, proms, all that's set to the side. Uh, what hasn't changed this year is the love of Christ, the grace that he's shown us. He's unfailing. So today we want to set aside any other agenda that we might have. We want to move out of his way. We can trust him now that he can move. When he moves, it's in perfect order. God, we just offer ourselves to you. We move out of your way, God. Move how you want to move.
Hey, so this has been just a wonderful day of worship. We're so glad to have you with us. I want to just get into the word now. I'm excited for this series, Pass It On. It's been such a blessing to so many lives. I've been receiving text messages, emails, Facebook notifications, and just all kind of information talking about how this series is blessing them. But well, we want to close it out today by looking at Genesis chapter 48, verses 8 and 9 say this. Israel saw Joseph's sons and said, Who are these? Joseph said to his father, they are my sons whom God has given me in this place. And he said, please bring them to me and I will bless them. Please bring them to me and I will bless them. I want to talk today from this thought, passing the blessing, passing the blessing. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this time together. Give grace for preaching, give grace for teaching, prepare the hearts and minds of your people for the receiving of your word. Let us not miss what the Spirit of the Lord has to say to the church, but make it plain, make it relevant, make it applicable, that we may hear from you, that we may sense what you're calling us to do in our families and our homes, and that we may be convicted to the point that we share and, and, and promote and push that which you've placed upon our lives, that we may pass the blessing on, if you will, to the future generations. In Jesus' name, we ask it all, believe and get done. And the people of God said together, amen. You know, my brothers and sisters, there are so many things going on in the world now, but if there's one element that I think is most critical and, and the most concerning out of all of those elements, it would be the nature of the family. We're seeing a generation change like we've never seen a generational change before. We, we, we've seen a generation that is, has taken on to technology and, and has used technology as an opportunity to affirm itself rather than receiving that affirmation in many cases from the parents and the family that are around them. To this end, we're seeing suicide rates increase amongst our youth. We're seeing uh, sicknesses increase amongst our young people. And the concern I have is that we as the body of Christ Christ have implemented a lot of things, but I think there's one thing missing from what we do in the body of Christ that will make a world of difference. And that one thing is passing a blessing on to our children. The Jewish community specializes in several things, but one thing that stands out to me, head and shoulders above all else, is the fact that they're committed to blessing their children, conferring an actual blessing or benediction onto the lives of their children. You know, it's interesting that we talk about this. We always quote the scripture, Proverbs 29, 18, that where there is no vision, the people perish, or more, tra more accurately translated, the people are unrestrained. So we, we have this big conversation about vision and the, the necessity of vision as it pertains to the outcomes of the lives of those that either have it or don't have it, yet and still we, we 
refuse or we neglect this responsibility of passing vision or blessing on to our children. It's necessary, my brothers and sisters, that we understand that our children are not only our responsibility to raise and get out of the house, but they're our responsibility to ensure that, that, that we not only give them food and give them shelter, but we give them vision. We, we help them understand who God has called them to be and what God has called them to do. Understand, whenever anyone gives a blessing or confers a blessing, they're literally conferring three things. Number one, they're conferring God's vision for the life of that person. They're literally telling them that this is how God sees you. Number two, they confer value because when a person understands who they are in God and that God didn't just make them haphazardly and is not just standing by aimlessly but has given a direction for their lives, then they understand that they're worth something. They understand that they have a value not only before humans but before heaven itself. And then finally, it gives their eternal vocation. It helps them to understand that when they were placed on this earth, they had a responsibility given to them by heaven to do something that would impact the world for the Lord Jesus Christ and make an impact that only they could bring. This is what they get when, when you as a parent pull them to the side and lay hands on them and pronounce blessing over their lives. And so to give us a more biblical insight on this, there's no greater narrative than the narrative of Jacob and him blessing the sons of Joseph. The word of the Lord gives us this narrative and it says that, that on one occasion, the word came to Joseph that his father Jacob was ill. Now at this time, Jacob and, and all of his sons are living in Israel. They're multiplying, they're doing well, but it's at the end of Jacob's life and Joseph comes and brings his sons with him. He goes to Jacob and Jacob begins to talk about how God blessed him in the land of Luz and, and, and how God met him there and God pronounced blessing on his life and how his mother Rebecca died before they could get to a place that, that basically became Bethel. He then says to, Jay, to Joseph, he says, now, I want you to understand that these sons that you have that were born to you in Egypt, I'm going to claim them as my own sons now. And every son you have after them, they'll be yours. But these two are going to be special to me. They're going to be mine. So Joseph brings the boys into the room and Jacob says, who are these? He said, these are the sons that I've had in the land of Egypt. Jacob brings them closer to them and closer to him rather and he hugs them and he kisses on them. And then Joseph positions them to be blessed by him. Joseph steps back, bows down, and takes the younger son, Ephraim, and places it towards Jacob's left hand, which is the hand of lesser blessing. Then he takes his older son, Manasseh, and places him towards Jacob's right hand, which is the hand of, of greater blessing. And Jacob does something unique. Jacob crosses his hands, and then he blesses Joseph. And he tells Joseph that the God that, that have fed me all the days of my life, the God that has shepherded me all of my days, the angels that redeemed me, he said, may the Lord bless these boys. May the Lord make them into great nations. And so when Joseph looks up, he notices that Jacob's hands are crossed. And he tries to correct it. He said, hold on, Daddy. Hold on. You, you got the wrong hand on the wrong boy. And Jacob says, no, no. I understand what I'm doing. He says, Ephraim, which is the younger, will be the greater nation. And Manasseh, which is, the, which is the older, will be great, but not as great as his younger brother. He says, and then he blesses them, and he places this blessing on them, and he says, may Israel be blessed with the blessing of Ephraim and Manasseh. In other words, putting Ephraim before Manasseh. Then he tells Joseph, he says, Joseph, I'm going to give you this land which you're in. And then afterwards, the Bible says that on top of the blessing he gave his other, he gave his other brothers, he gave Joseph the mountain that he had claimed from the Amorites. I want to walk back through this and just give you a couple of nuggets that are shown to us in this text. Are you all ready? Let's go into the word. So here's the first thing. The first thing is Jacob repositioned the boys to be blessed in an unusual way. The Bible says that Jacob is getting older. And so he calls Joseph into the room and, and Joseph is summoned into the room because his dad is, is ill. He comes into the room and the first thing he talks to Joseph about is how he was blessed by God at Luz. Now you have to understand that, that, that this is the first time that he received a blessing. His first blessing was actually received by his father Isaac when he manipulated Isaac to get the blessing instead of his older brother Esau. Now I need you to get that because the first time he hears himself be blessed is by Isaac. It's a manipulated blessing. And then the second thing that is mentioned about Luz is that Joseph gets a name changed. Well, this is not the first time Joseph's name had been changed or had been recommended to be changed. He had that same recommendation when he wrestled with the angel three chapters before. 
But cha the challenge at Luz, and this is what happened at Luz, is after he had manipulated the blessing and after the angel told him his name should be something else, God met him. He said, the Lord God Almighty, El Shaddai, the same God that met Abraham right before Isaac was born. He said, God met me. And there's a difference in the moment when God meets you and God blesses you and a human confers a blessing on you. Understand this, the entire time Jacob had been blessed, but he felt like he's stolen the blessing. He felt like because his name was trickster or, or his name was, 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 was schemer that, that he had stolen a blessing. He, he had it, but it really wasn't his. You know how it is when sometimes you get something, but you really don't think it belongs to you. You get the position, but, but you don't really feel like heaven gave you the promotion. And so Watch this. Jacob is, is living his entire life, walking in a blessing that he doesn't feel he deserves. But at Luz, something happens. God pronounces the blessing on him. God lets him know that this blessing, though it may not have been received or attained in the best method, God was still behind it. God lets him know, I've ordained you to be blessed. I've ordained you to be the father of many nations and to have nations come from you. Now, what he lets him know is this, just because you thought you didn't deserve it didn't mean it wasn't part of my plan just because you thought you had manipulated your way into it doesn't mean I didn't have it in store for you understand this beloved that anytime you receive a blessing it's a usual it's usually an indication that God is at work now sometimes you may feel like you got it the wrong way and some of you are feeling like you may have cheated the moment or or, or, or you manipulated the moment but I need you to understand that if it's up to you or excuse me, if it's God's will for you, God will show you that what you've attained was part of his plan. Watch this. And so God does two things. First, God showed them that the blessing has been ordained. Then God tells him about the name change. He says, no longer will you be called Jacob. You will now be called Israel, which again means victor or overcomer or prevailer. Watch this. He says, I want you to understand you're a prevailer with me. And when God names him this, the Bible says in that chapter, in, in the 35th chapter of Genesis, that Jacob made it his name. Now, now the angel told him he would be called that, but it's not until God told him that's who he was supposed to be, that he made it his name. And there are so so many of you watching this that have had names given by other people, but you didn't believe it about yourself. God sent me to tell you that if God has ordered the name to be given toward you, use this an indication that the name was meant to be given to you. And so watch, Jacob now receives the name Israel and he walks as a victor. He walks as a prevailer. He walks as the one that prevails with God, Israel. I need you to understand that when Jacob gets to that place where he receives the name. That's the moment that meant more to him than the wrestling of the angel. That's the moment that meant more to him than tricking his dad out of a blessing. It was the moment when God himself, the maker of heaven and earth, made it a point to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation, an ordination ceremony, if you will, to let him know he was blessed. He told his son, he said, look, son, God blessed me there. And so these sons that you have, I know you want them, I know you had them in a foreign land, but they're going to be my sons now. The same way that Reuben is my son and Simeon is my son, now these two boys will be my sons. Watch this. In other words, he said they're going to get a blessing that they're really out of order to receive. I'll get to that in a moment. He says, but I'm going to bless them in a way and at a level that they really shouldn't be blessed because I want them to experience it from my hand. Watch this, that sometimes people that receive blessings out of order are the ones that are the most prevalent and the ones that are most that have the greatest potential to bless other people out of order. When you've ever been through anything that you didn't feel like you were capable of getting, but you get it anyway. You don't mind blessing people supernaturally or extraordinarily, if you will. So the Bible says he tells them, I want to bless them. After this, Joseph brings the boys. Israel looks at him because at this time his eyesight is weak. And he says, who are these guys? Joseph says, these are my sons that were born to me in this land. Joseph looks at him and he hugs them. He says, son, I never thought I would see you. And now I get to see your sons. He says, this is such a great moment. And he decides to bless them. And so Joseph bow, takes a step back, bows down, and pushes the boy towards, the boys toward Jacob. As I said before, he pushes Ephraim toward his left hand, pushes Manasseh, the older, 
toward his right hand. And then Jacob does something that's unique. The fact that he makes space for them, the fact that he pushes them, means that he makes space for them to be blessed. Here's the question I have for you. Are you making the space to bless your children? When was the last time you said, instead of us going to the movies, we're going to make space to pronounce blessing on our children? When was the last time that you reached out to your parents and said, Dad, instead of us chopping it up this time, let's, will you just make this space to bless me? Joseph didn't just give a blessing. He made space for them to experience blessing. He carved out the moment. And after he carves the moment out, he pushes them toward his father. And once he pushes them toward his father, the Bible says when Jacob gets ready to bless him, Jacob does something unique. Now remember, Joseph has his face to the ground. Jacob crosses his hands. He puts his right hand on Ephraim, the younger, and his left hand on Manasseh, the older. And he begins to bless. But watch how he blesses. He doesn't bless the boys. He blesses Joseph. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. So, so his hands are on the boys, but he gives the blessing to Joseph. He refuses to put the reward of blessing in the hands of young men that can't handle it. He puts the blessing into the hands of the one that will be responsible for raising the young men in it. Let me just say this parenthetically, that it's a blessing to be able to bless your grandchildren, but you shouldn't be so adamant about blessing them that you remove the responsibility from their parent to do the work to bless them. Watch this, he gives them the reward but he puts it into the hands of Joseph. So he literally is blessing Joseph with their blessing. Oh gosh, he, he, he's blessing Joseph with that which is reserved for his kids. And so I want you to understand that whenever you get ready to bless and you get ready to bless your grandchildren, make sure their parents are in the room to hear the blessing. Make sure their parents are around to receive the blessing. It's almost like creating a, a, a trust, if you will, for the kids. It's, it's almost like saying, here, take this money for the kids or take this reward for the kids. That's what he was doing. He puts his hands on the boys and then he begins to bless them. And when he blesses them, he blesses them at three levels. He talks about first, the God of the blessing. He says, may the God that fed me all of these years, the God that has been my shepherd, the angel that has been the redeemer of my life. Let me stop here. The first thing when you get ready to bless your children is that you wanna talk about the God of the blessing. You wanna talk about the God that actually is responsible and powerful enough to carry the blessing out. So you want to talk about how God is able to be a provider or God is able to be a healer or God who is strong. He, he talked about the God of his ancestors, the God of his father and grandfather, Abraham and Isaac. He, he says, I want to make sure that they hear that this is the God that brought us this far. And so you want to also start by beginning the blessing with talking about who God is and who God has been to the family and the generations preceding them. The second thing he talks about, he says, let my name be upon him and also the names of Abraham and Isaac. Now, the key thing about this is that the names of these individuals pointed to their destinies. So the second thing is the details of the blessing. You want to not only say, may God bless you, but you want to speak clearly about what God is to do in the life of the one that's being blessed. So maybe it's may the Lord bless you with the strength to be able to carry out great assignments. May the Lord bless your name to be made great. May the Lord bless you with opportunities you did not deserve. However that is, you want to list out or lay out the details of the blessing. Then finally, he says, let them grow into a multitude in all the earth. So this speaks to the outcome of the blessing. First, you want to talk about the God of the blessing. Then you want to talk about the details of the blessing. And then finally, you want to talk about the outcome of the blessing. Maybe it's you want their names to be great in the earth, or maybe you want their families to be rich, or maybe you want their marriages to be strong. Whatever that outcome is, then you want to end the blessing by talking about the outcome. And so watch this. When he blesses them, he, he, he lays out who God is. He lays out what the blessing all about. And then finally, he lays out what it's going to look like in the end. While he's doing this, Joseph looks up and Joseph says, wait a minute. He notices that his hands are crossed. 
Joseph gets up and tries to correct his hand, saying, Daddy, wait a minute. You, you got the wrong hands on the wrong kid because your right hand's supposed to be on the greater of the two and your left hand's supposed to be on the left, lesser of the two. And Jacob says, no, no, no. I understand where my hands are. He says, I understand clearly that my hand is on the younger. My right hand's on the younger and my left hand's on the older. He said, but it's because the younger one, though he's younger, will be greater than his older brother. His nation will be greater than his brother's nation. And he says, matter of fact, let me bless them in a new way. He says, may Israel be blessed with the blessing of Ephraim and Manasseh. Wait, 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 wait. He's literally saying, may the blessing be out of order. Ah, oh, gosh. He says, may the one that's not supposed to get the greater blessing end up with the greater blessing and the one supposed to get that's supposed to get the greater blessing end up with the lesser blessing may may, may the second in line get what the first in line was supposed to get oh god i'm about to shout myself out here in the fountains watch this literally he says i'm gonna bless them but i want israel to understand that i'm putting an out of order blessing on them the rules will be shifted the the, the patterns will be shifted god's gonna do something that was not expected god will do something that was not in anticipated. He said, the blessing I'm about to show you is a blessing that will be in a space where no one that walks logistically will understand it. Watch this. It's the miracle blessing. It's the supernatural order. It's the extraordinary, unusual blessing. Watch this. He said, I'm going to give them the blessing that has blessed me all of these years. It's the out of order blessing. Y'all not feeling me. It means it may look like it's out of human order, but it's right in line with holy order. He says, I'm going to show you that when God bless is you. You won't always be the first in line, but you'll be the most blessed in line. You won't always be in the space where people think you should be to get what you get, but God will find a way to get it to you. Well, how in the world did Jacob know that God's out of order blessing would work? It's because his entire life was hinged upon an out of order blessing. His granddaddy should have never had the blessing he had coming from the land of Chaldeans and hearing from the God of Israel. He was blessed out of order. His dad was not the firstborn, he was the secondborn. Ishmael should have had the greater blessing, but Isaac got the greater blessing. Jacob was not the firstborn, Esau was the firstborn. Esau should have had the greater blessing, but God gave Jacob the greater blessing. David was not the firstborn. His brothers were already there, and they should have gotten the blessing, but David got the blessing of king. Can I go a little bit deeper? Jesus was not the firstborn. Adam was the firstborn, but instead of Adam getting it, Jesus got the blessing. Can I go even deeper? You were not supposed to be saved. You were supposed to be on the cross, but the cross was an indication that God said, look, instead of you dying, I'm going to switch the hands, and Jesus will take the cross and you'll get the crown. Let me just tell you, you have a God that will bless you in a way that you never imagined. Even when you feel like you're the least of these, even when you feel like everyone else should get it before you, you're the least qualified, the least opportunistic. You, you're the one that should have been left out on the side. You're the one that should have gotten the leftovers. God sent me to tell you, he still blesses out of order. I just came to tell you that when God uses you, when God blesses you, it's up to you now to start to use that same blessing to confirm it on your children, confirm it on your children's children so that they can see that the life you live was not just meant for you. You. It was meant for everyone that come out of your bloodline. It was meant for everyone that was a part of your legacy. Is there anybody on this broadcast? I feel my help. Is there anybody on this broadcast that'll shout, I'm a recipient of the mercy blessing. I'm a recipient of the unusual blessing. And so now it's my turn to put that same blessing on my children and my children's children. Listen, my brothers and sisters, it's time for us to pass the blessing. Can I go even deeper? Here it is. Jacob ends the entire chapter by telling Joseph, you still get out of order blessings. Back when you were a kid, I blessed you with a coat of many colors. Then, then you ended up the most blessed man in Egypt. And now I'm gonna do it again. The same thing I did before to let you know it wasn't a fluke. I'm going to give you more than your brothers get. I'm going to give you a mountain that your brothers couldn't get. I'm going to do it for you. I'm going to bless you out of order. And I want you to see this and I'm done. 
there was a commitment in the text to not assume that the generations following would just know they were blessed. There was a commitment to say, let me make the space to pronounce the blessing upon them, that they may walk with the confidence that God is with them. God has a plan for them and God values them so that at the end of their journeys, they can look back over a life that was not accidental, but was intentional and was designed by heaven to be a blessing to the world around them. I challenge you today, as soon as you get off of this broadcast, to bring your children into the room. Well, if they're not in town, call them on the phone. Take five minutes and pronounce a blessing over their lives. Guys, let's pass the blessing. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word today. Thank you for the opportunity to hear from you. Now, Lord, use our lives to confer blessing on those that are within our reach, that your name alone may receive glory, but that their lives may hear your plan for them and that they may move forward knowing that they're not accidental, but they're intentional from heaven. To the praise of the glory of God, we thank you for how you're going to not only bless them, but use their lives, their blessed lives, to be a blessing for others. In Jesus' name, we ask it all. Amen. Listen, you may be here today, and you've never given your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. And you're saying, man, I'm not, I'm not there yet. Maybe you feel like you're not smart enough, or, or, or you haven't given enough, or you're not a good enough person. Well, here's the fact. I told you God blesses us out of order. When Jesus died on that cross, the purpose for his cross was for all to take on all of the things that would leave us with guilt or shame. There's no condemnation in Christ, meaning that, that, that everything that could have condemned us before heaven, he's already paid for on the cross. But the one thing he couldn't do is receive that, is make you receive that payment for your salvation. And so today, if you're on this broadcast and you're wondering if God can use you, if God can make you his child, if God even values you, the answer is yes, a resounding yes. When God woke you up this morning, he woke you up with one intent to make sure that before the end of this day, he could call you his baby girl or his son. And so if you're here today and you've never given your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, it's three steps. It's pretty simple. Number one is to acknowledge the fact that you're a sinner that on our own and our own human ability, we're born in sin, we're, we're shaped in, in, in mess ups and issues. But because of Jesus Christ, we do have hope. And that hope is found in the second principle, which is B, believe that Jesus Christ died to pay for your sins. And believe not only that he died, but God raised him from the dead. So now he has power over death, which is the penalty of sin and, has, and can give us now eternal life. And then finally, confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. Make him the ruler of your life. Make him the master of your life. Give him permission to order every step, to order every thought, and then surrender your life to becoming a disciple or a follower of Jesus Christ, that you may be the light of this world, reflecting his light and his love into the lives of others. And so it's that simple, simple as ABC. Acknowledge that you're a sinner. Believe that Jesus died to pay for your sins and God raised him from the dead. And three, confess him as the Lord Jesus Christ. Now today, if you're making that decision and you want to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, go on to the app and on our church app or on the church website at FBC Murfreesboro, all spelled out, dot org, there's a place where you can join FBC. Just click that tab, join FBC, and under there you'll see a place where it speaks of giving your life to Christ or, or, or becoming a first-time believer. Check that box and submit your information and we'll be with you. Also, if you're on here and you're saying, I need a church home, and I believe this is where God is calling me to serve, go to that same place where it says join FBC and click on the spot where it says to come under Christian experience or become a member of First Baptist Church and we'd love to have you. Finally, if you're on here and you're saying, well, I need a place to cover me spiritually while I'm between church homes and I just believe that God is calling me to use this place as my spiritual covering or receive them as my spiritual covering, you can go on that same place on the app and put watch care. That's our, our system or our word, if you will, for understanding or, or letting you know we want to cover you spiritually. Immediately after you do that, just click submit and someone from our team will get with you. Listen, we're so glad to have you. And on behalf of the First Baptist Church family, we just want to say welcome to First Baptist Church. God bless you. Hello, family. Thanks for joining us for today's worship. Check out these updates. Discipleship is in our DNA, and we have so many resources and tools on the FBC app in the growth zone to help you grow in the faith. 
You can also register for the Midday Bible Study on the FBC app or the website. Join us every Wednesday at noon for deep topics designed to take your life to the next level. Join us this Wednesday. FBC family and friends, we want to thank you for your support during this time. We are still able to make so much of an impact in our community because of your giving. If you desire to give, here are three ways you can give today. First, you can go through the FBC app or the website. You can also give through the Givelify app. And finally, you can mail your gift to FBC. Our address is 738 East Castle Street, Murfreesboro, Tennessee, 37130. Thanks again for making Kingdom Impact with your gifts. We believe in the power of prayer, and we are still praying together. Put a reminder in your calendar for Sundays at 7.40 a.m. Just simply call the prayer line at 425-436-6376 and enter the access code 489-244. If you have a prayer request, let us pray with you. Prayer requests can be submitted daily via the website or FBC app. You can also text them to 615-624-4170. And finally, if this worship experience blessed you, watch it again and again. Be transformed by the word and share it with others who need to hear the good news of Jesus Christ. Be blessed and join us for next Sunday's broadcast. Hey guys, let's close out with prayer. Here we go. Father, we thank you for this time together. We thank you for how you've blessed us and now positioned us to be a blessing to others. Use our lives to pass the blessing on to those generations following us that they may know the power of our God in their own lives in a very real way to the praise of your glory. Now, Lord, use us this week to be a blessing and be a light in this world that those that encounter us may encounter the light and love of Jesus Christ through us. It is in Jesus' name that we ask it all, believing it done. My brothers and sisters, may the love of God, the peace of God, and the grace of God rest, rule, and abide with each of you until we meet again on this side or in glory. Y'all be safe. God bless you. God keep you. And all that received it, received it by saying, amen. Take care. We'll see you next week, y'all.